everything about 2020 sucked. And not just the video games. Did you know that the rest of the year was bad? But none of that matters because only video games does. These are the worst 10 games of 2020. At its core, I don't even think Avengers is a bad game. The core gameplay there is pretty great. They nailed how it should be when you play as Thor, or how it feels to throw Captain America's shield, or rage with the Hulk. The characters all play how they should. But that's the only good part of the gameplay. Everything else around it is so boring, so monotonous. There aren't a whole lot of levels to choose from, so you'll find yourself playing the same areas over and over. There also isn't a lot of enemy variety, which means you end up beating up a lot of the same robots. The only real driving factor here is finding equipment, which makes your numbers go up. It's essentially a superhero version of games like Destiny. But all of that really isn't why it's on this list. It's here because of the battle pass and microtransaction nature of it all. To get any kind of cosmetics for your heroes, you need to level up the battle pass. This is done the easiest by, what else, spending real money to finish the battle pass. The other option is to earn battle points by completing daily and weekly challenges, which when doing them optimally will net you a handful of battle pass level ups every week. Doing it this way takes forever and means constantly doing the same repetitive gameplay. And wouldn't you know it, the best and coolest costumes you can unlock for any character are all the way at the end of the battle pass, trying to make it even more enticing for you to spend money. But that's not the worst part. The worst part is that there is a separate battle pass for each individual character. You can't just spend money on one for the team. Oh, no, no, no. Each of them have their own. Each need to be played separately. Grinding is needed for each of them. And this is all after paying a full $60 for its retail release. That is egregious. And after it being out for months, I'm still seeing gameplay glitches and general wonkiness. It could at least be patched up by this point. Remember when they promised Spider-Man for the PlayStation version? It's months before he's even out. And already, nobody cares. Not so much a garbage, unplayable, broken game as it is a disappointment. Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles Remastered was something that the fans of the original have been clamoring for for years now. So did I, especially with the Switch and how easy it would be to make the same four-player cooperative action work on the portable machine. But then it turns out, it won't be on just Switch, it'll be on PlayStation 4 as well! With crossplay! And also on phones! With crossplay! Square Enix so desperately wanted to force this onto mobile that it made its multiplayer mode an unintuitive, unenjoyable mess. Rather than simply joining up with friends to make a party and experience the game together, you have to make a room and give everyone the equivalent of a friend code just to play together. And you disband at the end of every dungeon, making you have to redo and re-enter the room code every single time. It's also incredibly laggy, timing spells together, which is essential to beat the game, became a clunky mess. Progress is only saved for the host player, and all cutscenes, cities, and story elements are restricted to single player. Let's put it this way. The remaster is so rough to play, I'd much rather play the GameCube original with four Game Boy Advances hooked up. I don't get it! I just don't get the appeal behind Fall Guys! And I tried! I really did! It seemed like any time I opened up Twitch and saw someone else playing Fall Guys, they were having a blast! So naturally, I wanted to play it and have fun too! I hate it. I think Fall Guys sucks. It's like playing Mario Party minigames without the structure or purpose of Mario Party. It's a game that requires so much precision platforming with a physics engine that works entirely against that. But that's the only enjoyment that comes from the game. Haha, <laughs> he fell down, funny! How many times have you played it and found yourself saying out loud, Grab it! Just grab it! Grab the goddamn ledge! Get up! Just get up there! It's like the game arbitrarily decides when it wants to work or not. I know the argument, well it's better with friends! but I don't even think that's the case. If someone gets eliminated early in a party, that means that person is stuck sitting around doing nothing until the other players lose. It's either that or the winning players abandon their wins just to regroup and play some more. Fall Guys is a flash in the pan game with no real staying power. Interest in it for players and even Twitch viewers dropped off hard for good reason. And that reason is among us, but also because Fall Guys sucks. I love Warcraft 3. I have so many fond memories of it and played it for hours upon hours in LAN parties with my friends. It was begging for a remaster. But then Blizzard announced they aren't just remastering it, they're making it better. Thus, Warcraft 3 reforged. 
They showcased at BlizzCon how it'll have completely redone cutscenes to make it even more cinematic than ever before. Even cooler, new cutscenes and dialogue to help it better fit the timeline and continuity with World of Warcraft. And those things didn't happen! Upon release, it's practically the exact same game. All those promised new features are not included in the slightest. It's closer to remaster than reforge. But there was that one cutscene with Arthas versus Illidan, but honestly, it's worse than the original. Frustrating and disappointing, but only a fraction as to why it was so bad. The online connectivity was abysmal. Numerous reports of players unable to connect, maintain connection, or enjoy a single match online. But because the new online infrastructure was also implemented into the original Warcraft 3, it meant that both games were completely unplayable online. The remaster was also missing features from the original, such as online tournaments and clan tags. The user interface is arguably worse. There are graphical bugs and glitches galore. People began to immediately request refunds for Reforge, remaining with the original instead. And then people looked at the new end user license agreement. See, in the original Warcraft 3, people could make their own custom maps and share them. One of those maps exploded in popularity and became its own mode, and it's known as Dota, a custom map so popular that it birthed an entirely new genre of games. And with Warcraft 3 Reforged, the fine print states any and all custom maps made are hereby wholly owned by Activision Blizzard. That way, just in case something becomes a hit like the original Dota, they own it and they make money off of it. It ends up being an anomalous being. Not quite a simple remaster, but certainly not a full reforge. But most definitely, a big slap in the face to millions of fans. You forgot about this one already, huh? Resident Evil Resistance is a new multiplayer mode that came with every copy of the Resident Evil 3 remake. And it sucks. It's one of those multiplayer games where it's four people trying to survive to the end together while a fifth player controls a mastermind of all the enemies. This sounds like it could be a cool strategic mode as you carefully place traps and players cautiously proceed forward. Nah, it's a clusterfuck. Players bolt forward as fast as possible because of a time limit and there's little reason to actually work together. As the mastermind, you're better off just spamming things with no rhyme or reason rather than trying to be even remotely clever, especially while trying to wrestle with these controls. And playing as a survivor is just a mess. There's a huge delay between hitting a target and seeing the damage pop up. The lag makes responsiveness impossible to rely on, and it's so easy to get overwhelmed that you're just stuck where you are without a chance of survival. Matchmaking is atrocious, often pairing uneven players together and taking forever. But I haven't even gotten to the worst part yet, because this is another multiplayer game where you get cosmetics and upgrades from, what else? Loot crates. God damn it. The Resident Evil 2 remake was incredible. The Resident Evil 3 remake was okay in comparison and could have been so much better, which it would have been if Capcom put the effort into that instead of forcing in this half-baked forgetful multiplayer mode. I stumbled onto this one by accident. I was just trying to find new horror games to play in October that would be worth my time. Remothered Broken Porcelain isn't even worth the time to say its ridiculous title. It's a horror game where you play as someone who has to run and hide from enemies. Nothing is scarier in this game than its lack of polish. Please stab! Uh. <laughs> The sound design is all over the place. Sometimes they're good. Other times, things are way louder than they should be or make no sense, making it too difficult to determine where the enemies you're supposed to hide from are even coming from. Sometimes enemies can't hear you at all. Other times they hear you so easily that it feels like it's impossible to progress. Sometimes the enemy AI is so laughably dumb that just walking into another room causes them to forget what they were even doing. The most irritating thing was just how unresponsive the whole game is. I swear, pushing buttons just doesn't work and the game refuses to acknowledge my input. Even the simple act of opening a door becomes an aggravating rage fest because it just won't open. I stopped playing as soon as I got stuck. I mean, I knew where I was supposed to go. I just, I tried to crawl through a hole in the wall and then I couldn't do anything. That's where it ended for me. Even if I wanted to show more of how bad it is, I can't. Because even the game refused to keep playing after this point. Nothing's doing anything. Oh yeah, now we're really getting into the garbage. Dawn of Fear is a new take on the classic Resident Evil for PlayStation 1. Only if it were the finals project of a community college student. Fixed camera angles, a big convoluted mansion, and all kinds of keys and puzzles for different doors. Only with less rhyme or reason for any of it. I want you to imagine that for a second. 
dozens of doors and puzzles to unlock them, but they make less sense than in Resident Evil. Character models look basic with vacant eyes. Zombies look like they bought pre-made models and just slapped some blood on it. When they attack you, it doesn't even seem all that threatening. It's more like a gentle makeout session in the backseat of his mom's hybrid car. They're also not threatening because of how easy they are to kill. Just the knife alone can easily take them down. Not that you'd be able to tell because there are zero sound effects for any damage anywhere. The whole mansion is incredibly confusing and requires you to constantly retread the same rooms you've been to. Only every room in every hallway looks exactly the same. And there is no map button. The amount of time I wasted because I couldn't remember exactly where to go because they couldn't include a map button? By the way, the whole time I've been playing the Steam version on a controller, only the aim and shoot buttons don't work. So anytime I have to go to attack, I move with the controller, right click to aim, and then left click the mouse to attack. If you're not convinced that this is meant to be inspired by Resident Evil, there's a room you can find that literally has Chris Redfield's jacket and a typewriter which the character wishes he had an ink ribbon for. And it also rips off Metal Gear Solid 3. What a thrill. The darkness and silence of the night. I'll forgive the complete lack of voice acting and the awful grammatically incorrect run-on sentences because it's clear English isn't the developer's first language, so that's whatever. What I don't forgive is that this game got released onto Steam and the PlayStation Store thanks to an initiative called PlayStation Talents. Talents! Who saw this and said to themselves, that's some raw talent right there, and then released this three-hour game for $25. Cookie Mama Cookstar. It's the Nintendo Switch game that's now illegal. Cooking Mama Cookstar is quite easily the worst Cooking Mama game ever made and one of the worst games on the system. It's not even remotely fun to play. You just do a series of crappy motion controls in whatever order. Remember that era of gaming in like 2008 where every single action game that came out was just filled to the brim with quick time events? That's this game, only with inaccurate motion controls. And you have to use motion controls. You can't play this with a pro controller or even just in handhold mode. There's no progression or anything, it's just more recipes. To say this is all tedious is as overdone as the game's voice acting. After every single motion you do, Mama has to say something. I think you should have your own game. It's at its worst when Mama says something that can only be described as, how do you do, fellow kids? Fix or it didn't happen. Perhaps you recall the notoriety of Cooking Mama Cookstar shortly after it released, when it was found that the game's files included the ability for cryptocurrency mining, meaning it could use every Nintendo Switch to mine for bitcoins. Now, it didn't actually do any of that, but the ability was there. The far more important lawsuit was that Cooking Mama was released without proper trademark licensing. It wasn't even made by the original Cooking Mama developers, the same team that made all the others. IP holders Office Create terminated their license on March 30th, 2020, likely due to how awful the game is. The publisher, Planet Entertainment, then began selling the game on March 31st, one day after they lost the license, saying, screw it, and trying to grab whatever money they can. And that's why Cooking Mama Cookstar is no longer available on the eShop, can't be purchased from any retailers, and never made it to the PS4, making my unfortunate copy contraband. What a disaster. How can a game as good as Cyberpunk 2077 be such a colossal fuck-up? For clarity, I'm mostly talking about the PlayStation 4 and Xbox One versions. Yes, even the PC version has tons of bugs and glitches, but the core console versions are staggeringly atrocious. As in, this should not have been released bad. Constant stutters, game crashes, and overall just looking bad makes Cyberpunk seem like an overhyped embarrassment. And with this, it is. This is on the base consoles, not the Pro or One X versions, you know, the consoles that the majority of players have. And it's not that these consoles can't handle it, as they both have plenty of other games that look incredible on them without hardware games. Cyberpunk on them is barely playable. Sure, some patches have come out and fixed some problems, but it hasn't been enough. This is all after CD Projekt Red went back on their promise of not forcing their developers into a crunch period, and it still wasn't ready for release. 
and it would seem some people agree. Shortly after its launch, Sony delisted Cyberpunk from its PlayStation Store, both for PlayStation 4 and for PlayStation 5, and offered refunds. Microsoft also began to be more generous with their refunds. What sucks about all of this is, underneath it all, Cyberpunk is a fun game to play. Once you're able to, you know, play it, do not buy it. At least not yet. Wait for another six months worth of patches to come out before you even consider it. And maybe by then, just maybe, it'll have somehow crawled out of this monumental embarrassment. Remember when Amazon said they were developing a video game? Me neither, but here it is. Crucible was a pioneering project for Megacorp Amazon, finally moving into the world of making their own games instead of just buying other platforms. It's basically yet another hero-based team shooter, a la Overwatch and some other games I don't play. Upon release, it was completely looked over and no one paid it any attention. It was so aggressively mediocre, there's no real reason to play it over its competition. Crucible was launched at the end of May after years of development. It wasn't necessarily awful, just unoriginal, uninspired, and unimaginative. It also suffered from an identity crisis. It wanted to be a MOBA, a team-based shooter, and a battle royale game all at once. It was too confusing, so in June, a month after launch, they killed off the battle royale and deathmatch modes, making a third-person shooting MOBA. This way they could focus on just that one mode and try to make that as good as possible. But that still wasn't enough to help them solve their issues. A month after that in July, Crucible was pulled from stores and put back into closed beta. And it didn't get much better from there, as in October they announced that Crucible would be shutting down on November 9th. It didn't even last a year. Crucible was so poorly thought out and so poorly planned, it was cancelled after it was released. This hardly inspires any amount of confidence in Amazon's upcoming game projects, including an all-new MMO set to release in spring, and a Twitch Plays Pac-Man game that was also supposed to be released last summer. So F's in the chat for Crucible, the Amazon game so bad that it Benjamin buttoned itself right out of 2020. Not a single good thing happened in 2020. It's too bad I can only pick the top 10 worst games, because otherwise I would just put all of them on here, because they were all bad. I don't even know what the point of getting excited over video games in 2021 is going to be, because we already know they're all going to be bad. So, if nothing else, I think I will just not play any more new video games. And neither will you. You'll still be playing Among Us. Hey, thanks for watching this video. If you haven't already, please subscribe, like the video, ring the bell, and watch all my other ones, like the top 10 best games of 2020. And don't forget to follow me over on Twitter, over on Twitch, and on Instagram.